In this video, I'm gonna show you how to check the voltage of a battery using a multimeter. I'm gonna use the battery on my riding mower here as an example, but this applies to everything from a AA battery up to a car battery and everything in between. This video is intended for beginners, people who have not used a multimeter before, so I'm going to walk you through it step by step, explain how this thing works and how to use the settings on it so you can check the voltage of a battery. Now, in terms of why you would want to do this at all, why would you spend the money on a multimeter at a hardware store, this is a useful troubleshooting step that is very easy to do if you have a device that is not working. So your lawnmower won't start, your car won't start, your kids have a toy that isn't working. This is a simple way to rule out whether the battery is the problem, and if the battery is dead and needs to be recharged or replaced, or if the battery is actually fine and there is something else wrong that is preventing the device from working. So again, cheap investment, 10 or 20 bucks, you do not need a fancy multimeter, can give you an easy way to tell whether the dead batteries are the problem in your device or if it's something else. So to start, let's get a little more close up with the multimeter here. This is a manual ranging multimeter, so it has a dial with a whole bunch of different settings on it. This can look kind of scary and overwhelming at first because there's a whole bunch of numbers and symbols. There's a lot of other things we are not going to cover in this video. So we are specifically talking about measuring something called DC voltage. DC stands for direct current. So that is a constant voltage from a battery. That's separate from AC or alternating current voltage, which we have here with this squiggly line. That is voltage that sort of oscillates back and forth. That's what you get from a wall outlet in your house. We're not going to talk about that in this video. We're not going to talk about measuring current or resistance, which are two other electrical variables that a multimeter can measure. Again, that's kind of a topic for another video, the relationship between those three variables and what they all mean. And we're just not going to get into that. We're just going to talk about measuring the voltage of a battery. I do have some other tutorials linked in the description that cover those other topics in more detail. But again, here we're just talking about voltage. So to get started using your multimeter to measure voltage, your multimeter is going to come with two probes, usually a black one and a red one. You're going to plug the black one into a port that is usually labeled COM for common. That is also your ground or reference. So voltage is measured between two points. So this is the point that you define as zero and then you use the red probe to measure voltage relative to that point. Your red probe is going to get plugged into whichever port is labeled with a V. Again, there are a bunch of other symbols next to it here. That is the Greek letter omega, which stands for ohms, the unit me to measure resistance. And then MA stands for milliamps, which is a unit of current, which, again, we're not talking about in this video, but this is sort of a multifunctional port that can label all three of those things. We then have this other port here labeled 10A that stands for 10 amps. So that port is just for measuring really high currents. But for measuring voltages, you want to have your black, sorry, your red, probe plugged into the port with the V. Then for your dial settings for measuring the voltage of a battery, again this might vary depending on your exact multimeter, but you're going to have something like a V with horizontal lines next to it. So you don't want the V with the squiggly lines. Again, that is for alternating current or changing current from a wall outlet. For DC, direct current, which is constant from a battery, you want the V with the horizontal lines to it. It might also say VDC or DCV or some combination of those letters and symbols. And on a manual ranging multimeter here, you see I have different numbers. And these numbers are going to tell you the maximum voltage it can measure for that range. So for most common batteries, like AA car batteries, the things we've been talking about here, 20 volts is gonna be a good place to start. So for example, the car battery and the battery on my riding mower here are 12 volts. So that fits within the range of 20 volts here. For bigger batteries, for example, I've got a uh, electric weed whacker over there where if I zoom in, you see that's 80 volts. So I would need to move up to the 200 volt range because I'm not gonna be able to read it in the 20 volt range. But again, for most of the common batteries you're gonna encounter in household devices, the 20 volt range is fine. So your multimeter might have a separate on switch that you need to turn on. Some of them are just turned on and off by the dial itself. But once you've got those three things, you're all set. We've got it turned on. We've got the probes plugged in. We've got the dial set to 20 volts. You're then gonna take your two probes. And this part is a little hard to do with one hand when filming, but you need to identify 
the positive and negative leads on your battery. So with something like a car battery or the riding motor battery, the positive is usually going to be covered by this red thing. The negative might be covered by something black. If it's something like a AA battery or a D battery or any of those, there will usually be a plus for positive on one end. You're just going to take your two probes and touch metal to metal on both sides. Again, this is kind of hard to do with one hand, so pardon me here. I'm going to touch the black one there to the exposed metal on the negative terminal, the red one to the exposed metal on the positive terminal, and you see the reading might fluctuate a little bit if your hands are moving or slipping around, but your multimeter should then show the battery voltage on the screen. Now, your next question is, okay, that's great, I'm getting a voltage on the screen, how do I know if the battery is dead? And again, this one's bouncing around because I'm trying to kind of hold this with both hands there. And that, a quick Google search for the type of battery you have will usually tell you. So a battery being dead does not mean that the voltage has gotten all the way down to zero. This voltage will sort of drain as the battery ages. But for example, for a car or lawnmower battery, you might start to see a degradation in performance or difficulty starting as soon as 11 or 10 volts or somewhere in that range or if it's been sitting all winter without being used it might be all the way down to four or five volts or something but it's usually not going to go all the way down to zero so just because the voltage is not zero does not mean that the battery is not dead if the device isn't turning on or isn't starting and you see a voltage lower than the nominal rated voltage of the battery which again in this case is 12 volts that could mean you have an aging or dead battery that it is time to charge or replace. Now, if you do see just flat zero with nothing, that again, probably doesn't mean the battery is dead. That probably means you have an open circuit somewhere, meaning you are not making good contact with your probe. So again, if I only connect the black probe, but don't connect the red probe, I do not get a reading. You need both of these connected to get a voltage reading. Or if maybe I didn't plug these in all the way and one of the probes is loose plugged into the ports on the multimeter, I'm gonna have an open circuit there and even if the battery is good, I will just read zero no matter what I do because I don't have a good connection. So again, if you see a zero, you should get suspicious that you don't have good connections, not that the battery itself is actually zero. You wanna double check everything on your meter and then try again. The one thing to be very careful to avoid when trying to check the voltage on the battery is accidentally doing it when you have your multimeter set to one of the current measurement settings. So long story short, that will effectively short circuit the battery, which will both blow the fuse in your multimeter and especially for something like a car battery can be kind of dangerous because you can get a very large amount of current to flow and you don't want to have sparks or start a fire or anything crazy. So. Again, make sure you have it set to that DC voltage range. Look for the me, V. Make sure you don't have something with an A, which stands for amps, selected because that means you are measuring current. And again, you will short circuit the battery if you connect the leads and you don't want to damage anything. So make sure you are always over here on voltage when measuring a battery. And if some for some application you do need to measure current, which again, I'm not covering in this video, it is always safe to, if your dial has an off position, turn it back to off, or if it doesn't, move it over to one of the voltage settings so it is, when you're done, so it is on voltage the next time you pick up your meter. The risk is you measured current for something, you left it on current, you forget that it's on current, and then the next time you pick me your meter up, you go to check a battery voltage, thinking that it's on vol voltage without checking the dial, then you blow the fuse and short circuit your battery. So remember, voltage, V, VDC, be with a horizontal line, whatever it is for checking battery voltage. The other thing to look out for if you have a manual ranging meter is the range you have set and if it is too low for the battery voltage. So if I go down to 2000 M here, that stands for 2000 millivolts. A millivolt is a thousandth of a volt. So 2000 millivolts is two volts and that is not going to be a big enough range. Again, sorry, this is kind of hard to do with one hand to measure my 12 volt battery here. So if I can get these connected again. So you see the screen of my meter just reads one. And that is the indicator for this particular meter that I am out of range. So depending on the meter, that reading might be different. Some will say OL for overload. Again, this one just says one. That means I am measuring a voltage, but it's above the range that I can currently display. So if I go back up to 
20, then I'll be back in range and I'll be able to get a reading. There is no harm in going up to a higher range. You will just lose some precision. So you note that when I have the dial down at 20 here, I get two decimal places. When I go up to 200, I can read a higher range, but I only get one decimal place now. So you're usually not too worried about hundredths or tenths of a volt when you are checking batteries like this, so not a big deal. But again, that's just some things to consider when you have a manual ranging meter, where again, 20 is gonna be okay for most common batteries. You might need to go up to 200 for something like an electric lawnmower or electric weed whacker, where you have one of those higher voltages. So that's it. Hopefully you found this helpful. If you have your own tips, tricks, suggestions, go ahead and leave a comment on this video. And again, check out some of the other videos in the description for more about the other things a multimeter can do.